Services Manager at the Metro Public Library in Metro Ohio. And I'm going to be talking about our virtual agent, uh, Emma, the cat bot. And since she is far more interesting than I am, which you're going to find out shortly, I'm going to let her introduce herself. Here's our website. Emma has her own help page. And she's also uh, takes, uh, she has a, a presence on our catalog and in a few other places. But I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Here she is. And she has not yet been able to teach me another type. Maybe speak and tried. And, sorry to say, failed. Hello, I'm Emma, a mentor, public library virtual agent. I was created to serve our patrons but I'm not a chef. My purpose is to provide immediate answers to questions about the library and to direct users to appropriate resources. My knowledge is constantly increasing, so if I can't answer your question today, I'll probably be able to in a few days. Uh, I'm just gonna show you a few things, a few typical questions that she would uh, answer. Uh, are you open on Easter? We are closed on Easter Sunday, but we are open on Good Friday. Please check the calendar on the left for all of our holiday closings. A very popular question right now, do you have ebooks? This is the number two question right after ours. At this time, we do not have downloadable audiobooks or ebooks. We hope to have downloadable ebooks soon. And when I say soon, I mean sometime this spring. I can't give you any details about the service at this time. If you're looking for ePods for your e-reader, you can download thousands of ePod titles free from Google Books or the Internet Archive. <clears throat> so her responses can contain a link uh, to another to another resource. Uh, she can also uh, pass searches uh, directly. And depending on your local settings, these will either open up as a pop-up or as another tab. I really can't type. I can help you find articles. Please enter your topic. Energy. I'm opening a link to the Ohio Wood Library, which contains an Iranian magazine and journal articles to help you. If you don't see the results, please turn off your pop up blocker. You may also want to check with a library during our regular hours of business, or if you need an immediate answer, try Know It Now which is available 24 hours a day. So we can look at her some more later. That'll give you a, a general idea of, of what she's able to do right now. So I'm calling this uh, presentation the cat who sat down at the reference desk. Usually I talk for librarians, and this is a little bit of a joke. Uh, if you're familiar with the books of Lily and Jackson Braun, I think there's about 60 in the series, uh, the Cat Who series. Had to uh, eight Danish modern, the cat to walk backwards, etc. So, you might be wondering, how did we end up, how did a public library in Ohio end up with a talking cat on our website? Well, for those of you who are not from Ohio, this is our former governor, Ted Strickland. And really, he is the reason uh, that Emma exists today. All of this started on June 19th, 2009. That was the day that Governor Strickland proposed a cut to uh, the state funding of libraries, and it was a pretty severe cut. He uh, was looking at uh, reducing uh, funding by about 50% over two years. Uh, for our state, about 70% of our libraries rely entirely on state funding for all of their operating funds. So this was gonna be, have a devastating effect on our services. As the Adult Information Services Manager at Metro, uh, I was faced with a very real possibility that our doors would be open. Uh, people could walk in, but there would be nobody at the reference desk. It would be completely empty. So I had to try to think of some way to, uh, to provide service, even, even if people were around. Uh, our initial response as a library uh, 
was to install self checks, which I don't know if you've used these in the library, but if you go into a grocery store or Lowe's, most of them have, have this sort of thing. Scan your items, you pay. Same thing in the library. Uh, as I sat at the ref desk watching these things being installed, I couldn't help but wonder if we could automate circulation and if we automate reference as well, to some, to some degree at least. Uh, so I began looking at the use of the virtual agent. Uh, in July, we started testing with SiteNow. Uh, in September, our board of trustees made an official, uh, they officially directed us to seek an implement technology to make up for the budget shortfall. What that meant was that we were not going to reduce hours. So again, the doors were going to stay open, whether or not we had somebody sitting at that desk. November 19th, Emma made her debut on our website. Uh, her very first version was, uh, again, using SiteCal. She had about 12 FAQs. Uh, in January, we uh, implemented or we enabled the uh, SiteCal AI. Uh, the next month, she answered nearly 10,000 questions. So we took that as a proof of concept that our patrons were going to uh, enjoy using her and would use her. Uh, between March and May, her brain migrated from SiteCal to Pandorabots, and she was rebuilt using Supervisor 2.0. Uh, in July, our library and the Akron Summit County Public Library began working in partnership. Oh my gosh, a talking cat. This actually comes from one of my very favorite conversations that a patron had with her. And it's a little bit edited. Uh, and the original conversation sort of went like, hi. And Emma said, well, hello there. And the user typed in, ah, an A with an H and all these exclamation marks. And Emma said, oh, dear. And then the user typed in, a talking cat, WTF, exclamation mark. I didn't want to. But in general, our patrons have embraced her. They really like her. She regularly gets marriage proposals. Teens like her. Some of them carry on long conversations, 100, 175, 200 interactions back and forth. Uh, people from all over the world have been using her. Excuse me. Her uh, use has increased dramatically. And her correct response rate for library questions. Uh, and when I say library questions, I mean things like your hours, how do I get a card, uh, where, where's the late branch, books, etc. We're correct with the response for those questions has increased from 12% back in February of 2010 to about 90% now. Yes. Ask, uh, how does that compare to the accuracy of a human reference test? Well, I count, I count the reference, the reference or catalog is a little different. Uh, the last study that I heard about when I was in library school, and this was some time ago, uh, human reference accuracy is about 50%. And that, that caused a little bit of a, a stir in our field uh, when the study came out because we're supposed to be better than that. <laughs> we want to be better than that. But at least for the library question, she's doing pretty well. Uh, how does she fit into our department? Well, we did do a study, and I'm going to go through some of this quick because you guys aren't librarians, but basically what we found is most of the time that somebody's on the desk, if they're talking to somebody in person or on the phone, they're helping folks with the PCs. How do I log on? How do I make my prints? Where do we put the coin in the coin box? Uh, they're doing catalog search place hold. You have a copy of this. We can put it on hold for sure. Other questions, where's the bathroom? Where's the kids' department? Where are the DVDs? Um, reference came in last. And when we did this tracking, uh, I have to emphasize that we, we called anything that didn't fit in these other categories of reference questions. So if someone asked, can you give me the phone number to, to the post office? That was counted as a reference question, just as I need you know a dozen peer-reviewed articles on green energy. They're not really the same sort of question, but they were counted together for this. So if we were to count real research questions, that percentage would have been much lower. Uh, other, other libraries are seeing a, a similar trend in, in what people are asking. Uh, there's some studies of the references later. Basically, most, most of what we're being asked these days is questions about our hours, uh, catalog search holds, uh, do you have ebooks, those sort of things. 
Uh, we are in the midst of strategic planning and our community focus group ranked reference services next to last. Uh, what do people want? Children's services, information fluency, New York Times bestsellers, those sort of things. Uh, there's some more studies, which again, you can, you're not librarians, so you can look at the references if you'd like. Uh, are reference services in decline? Well, there's some indication they might be. Perhaps this part of our field is fading away like the Cheshire cat up in, up in the tree. Uh, all of this does make librarians a little nervous, and uh, they are worried about, <laughs> they're, they're a little worried about this technology, and they're afraid of the big question. I tried to find a funny graph for this. It's really hard to find any sort of like robot, you know, menacing robot interaction with, with a human being that doesn't have a, an almost undressed woman on it, but this was about the best one I could find. <laughs> I'm not sure if she's a librarian or not. I couldn't find a copy of the comic to, to see, but anyway. So the big question, of course, will Emma and her offspring replace us? Uh, again, I'm not a, I was a musician before I became a librarian. I don't have a computer background. So some of you could probably answer this question better than I could, but from what I've read, my understanding is that will we be replaced? Well, maybe, but probably not anytime very soon. What, 10 years, 20 years, perhaps? Uh, why are we afraid of this? Well, you know, again, I tried to find a, a graphic here, something from the 50s, that typists were robots. We've been afraid of being replaced by a machine for a long time. This is nothing new. Uh, there are plenty of stories about computers turning on their creators. M5, from one of my favorite Star Trek episodes in the original series. Uh, HAL, etc. Not hard to find those sort of stories. Uh, change, of course, can be difficult even when it's positive. Uh, I've had a reference for about four years. I've heard all these complaints from the staff. You know, I didn't get a, I didn't get my master's to tell people where the bathroom is. Okay, I'm sure you didn't, and now you don't have to. But, but, but I don't like this cat bot. It's, I'm afraid. Well, how are we going to fix that? Uh, we're constantly integrating the technology anyway. This is nothing new to do with libraries. When was the last time you saw a card catalog? A real paper one. Decades, decades ago. And besides, replacing people is not our goal. For us, we want professional staff to do professional work. Again, if you got the master's degree, I don't want you spending your time showing people how to put a coin in a coin box. It doesn't make any sense. If a machine can do this, what's well, all uh, We want the, the burden of routine questions to be removed so the professional staff can do things that are appropriate to their time. And over, I wanted to include a picture. This is our, our self-information installation in our main library. It's, it's a phone picture, so it isn't the best quality, but it has a touch screen. And you can see it has sort of a game board, and patrons can go up. They will select a question, and Emma will both speak and display the, the answer. And